These lectures will be covered in two parts. At the end of this part one video, you should start to be able to describe motion in terms of frame of reference, displacement, time, and velocity, calculate the displacement of an object traveling at a known velocity for a specific time interval, and construct and interpret graphs of position versus time. Chapter 2, Section 1, Displacement and Velocity Motion Motion happens all around us. Every day we see objects such as cars, people, and soccer balls move in different directions with different speeds. In this chapter, we will discover how to analyze motion as a physicist does. One-dimensional motion is the simplest form of motion. One way to simplify the concept of motion is to consider only the kinds of motion that take place in one direction. An example of this one-dimensional motion is the motion of a commuter train on a straight track, shown on the screen here or on page 38 of your text. In this one-dimensional motion, the train can move either forward or backward along the tracks. It cannot move left and right, or up and down. This chapter deals only with one-dimensional motion. In later chapters, you will learn how to describe more complicated motions, such as the motion of thrown baseballs and other projectiles. Motion takes place over time and depends on the frame of reference. It seems simple to describe the motion of a train. As the train in figure 1.1 on the screen now, as it begins its route, it is at the first station. Later, it will be at another station farther down the tracks. But Earth is spinning on its axis, so the train, the stations, and the tracks are also moving along the axis. At the same time, Earth is moving around the Sun. The Sun and the rest of the solar system is moving through our galaxy, and this galaxy is traveling through space as well. When faced with a complex situation like this, physicists break it down into simpler parts. One key approach is to choose a frame of reference against which you can measure changes in position. In the case of the train, any of the stations along its route could serve as a convenient frame of reference. When you select a reference frame, note that it remains fixed for the problem in question and has an origin or starting point from which the motion is measured. If an object is at rest, not moving, its position does not change with respect to a fixed frame of reference. For example, the benches on the platform of any one subway station never move down the tracks to another station. In physics, any frame of reference can be chosen as long as it is used consistently. If you are consistent, you will get the same results, no matter which frame of reference you choose. But some frames of reference can make explaining things easier than other frames of reference. For example, when considering the motion of the gecko in figure 1.2 on the screen now or on page 39 of your text, it is useful to imagine a stick marked in centimeters placed under the gecko's feet to define the frame of reference. The measuring stick serves as an x-axis. You can use it to identify the gecko's initial position and its final position. A train moves from one station to another on an Earth that is rotating and revolving and in a solar system and galaxy that are both moving. A frame of reference is defined to simplify the description of the train's motion. The motion of this gecko can be described by imagining a meter stick placed under the gecko to define a frame of reference. Observers in different frames of references will see the motion of objects differently. The red dot in this picture is a stunt dummy dropped from the plane. From an observer in the frame of reference of the moving plane, the dummy appears to drop straight down and splash in the water. And from an observer in a stationary frame of reference on the ground, the dummy appears to fall in a curved path. Displacement As any object moves from one position to another, the length of the straight line drawn from its initial position to the object's final position is called the displacement of the object. Displacement is a change in position. The gecko in figure 1.2 moves from left to right along the x-axis from an initial position 
x sub i, to a final position, x sub f. The gecko's displacement is the difference between its final and initial coordinates, or x sub f minus x sub i. In this case, the displacement is about 61 centimeters, which is 85 centimeters subtract 24 centimeters. The Greek letter delta before the x denotes a change in the position of the object. Now suppose the gecko runs up a tree, as is shown in figure 1.3, or on the screen now. In this case, we place the measuring stick parallel to the tree. The measuring stick can serve as the y-axis of our coordinate system. The gecko's initial and final positions are indicated by y sub i and y sub f, respectively. And the gecko's displacement is denoted as y. Displacement is not always equal to distance traveled. Displacement does not always tell you the distance an object has moved. For example, what if the gecko in figure 1.3 runs up the tree from the 20 centimeter marker, its initial position, to the 80 centimeter marker? After that, it retreats down the tree to the 50 centimeter marker, its final position. It has traveled a total distance of 90 centimeters. However, its displacement is only 30 centimeters. Remember, y sub f subtract y sub i is equal to 50 centimeters subtract 20 centimeters, which is equal to 30 centimeters. If the gecko were to return to its starting point, its displacement would be zero because its initial position and its final position would be the same. As any object moves from one position to another, the length of the straight line drawn from its initial position to the object's final position is called the displacement of the object. Displacement equals change in position, or the final position minus initial position. If our ball travels from an initial position x equals 12 meters to a final position x equals 35 meters, the displacement is 23 meters. But what happens if the ball travels from the 35 meter mark to the 12 meter mark? If the ball travels from an initial position x equals 35 meters to a final position x equals 12 meters, the displacement is negative 23 meters. Keep in mind that the displacement is not necessarily the total distance covered. If the ball were rolling along from an initial position of 12 meters, hit a wall at 35 meters and rolled back to a final position of 18 meters, the overall displacement is only 6 meters. When working with displacement, always look at the initial position and the final position of your object. Displacement can be positive or negative. Displacement also includes a description of the direction of motion. In one-dimensional motion, there is only two directions in which an object can move, and these directions can be described as positive or negative. In this course, unless otherwise stated, the right or east will be considered the positive direction, and the left or west will be considered the negative direction. Similarly, upward or north will be considered positive, and downward or south will be considered negative. Figure 1.4 on page 40 of your text, or on the screen, screen now, gives examples of determining displacements for various situations. At this point, you should be starting to be able to describe motion in terms of frame of reference, displacement, time, and velocity, calculate the displacement of an object traveling at a known velocity for a specific interval, and Construct and interpret graphs of position versus time.